And now the last thing we need to do is actually move the birds, which I was going to do at the beginning, but I kind of skipped over. So right now we've checked, you know, if they've collided with things, uh, if they're going through the pipes and we're removing it and all that. But we actually need to move the birds based on their neural network. So the thing to think about here is what input are we giving to our neural network? Well, we've already discussed this and we're giving, you know, um, the distance between the top pipe and the distance between the bottom pipe, as well as the Y position of the bird. But what if there's more than one pipe on the screen? Well, this is a problem I ran into and we need to make sure we account for this. So essentially we need to check, we need to find out which pipe we should actually be looking at. If it's the first pipe in this list or if it's the second pipe in the list, this list because there'll be at max two pipes at all times. So to do this, I'm going to do this kind of weird thing. I'm going to say pipe IND equals zero. And now I'm going to check if the len of birds is greater than zero. And if it is, what I'm going to do is say if the len of pipes is greater than one and bird dot X, uh, not, yeah, bird dot X, we're going to say bird birds zero dot X. Uh, I just need to check this to make sure I don't mess it up uh, is greater than pipes zero dot X plus pipes zero dot top pipe or pipe top dot get underscore width. Then what we're going to do is say pipe underscore IND equals one. All right, so what did I just do here? Well, essentially we're setting the pipe index to be zero, which means the pipe we're actually going to look at for the, what do you call it? It's the input to our neural network. We're seeing if the length of birds is zero, because if it's not, we don't even need to bother doing this. Uh, and then we say, if the length of pipes is greater than one, then what we're gonna do is just get the first bird in our list X position. Now, since these X positions are always gonna be the same, this doesn't matter which bird I get, so I'm just using zero. If, I, if that is greater than um, pipe zero dot X plus pipe zero dot pipe top dot get width, which essentially just means if we've passed those pipes, then change the pipe that we're looking at to be the second pipe in the list. Uh, and that is as easy as that is to work. So now what we're going to do is for all of our birds, we're going to move them. So we're going to say four X uh, comma bird in enumerate birds. What we're going to do is create uh, or not create, but we're actually going to pass some values to a neural network. So the neural network that's associated with this bird get its output value, check if that output value is greater than 0 0.5, and if it is, make the bird jump. So we'll start by just moving the bird because this is important. So we'll say bird.move. We'll also just set the fitness of our bird, give it a little bit of fitness for surviving this long. So if it's reached this frame and we're actually running now, it needs to get a little bit of fitness because it's moved forward. So this is how we actually add fitness to our bird and encourage it to keep moving forward. Uh, we're gonna say bird, uh, or not bird, we're gonna say gex dot fitness plus equals 0.1. Now, the reason I'm giving so little fitness here is because this for loop is going to run 30 times a second. So in theory, every second our bird stays alive, it's going to gain one fitness point, which means that it's going to encourage the bird to stay alive and not just fly all the way up off the screen or fly all the way down. Okay, so now that we've done that, gex.fitness plus equals one, we need to create or actually activate a neural network with our input. So what I'm gonna say here is output, which is gonna hold the value of the output from our neural network is neat dot, uh, is it neat dot? No, it's not, sorry, it's net. And then this is gonna be x dot activate. In this case, now we need to pass a tuple with all our inputs. So we're gonna say bird.y, which is the first information that we need. And now what we're gonna do is actually find the distance in the y between the top pipe and the bird. So the way that we do that is we're gonna take the absolute value of bird y minus pipes, pipe underscore ind dot, I guess in this case it is height, which gonna, is gonna stand for exactly where our pipe is on the top of the screen. Then we're going to do another comma here. We're going to say abs of bird dot y minus pipes pipe underscore ind dot bottom. And this bottom is the y position of the bottom pipe. And since we're doing absolute value, it doesn't matter what way we subtract these, we'll still get the correct value here. Okay, awesome. So we have that. And now what we need to do is actually look at this output and see if it's greater than 0 0.5. So we're going to say if output is greater than 0 0.5, then we will say bird dot jump like that. Okay, so that should be moving our birds. There's definitely a few things I forgot here. I think one that I want to check here is if our bird 
reaches the top of the screen, I want it to um, not survive as well because there'll be some birds that just jump every time and they'll actually be able to get like above the screen over the pipes and they'll never die. So what I'm going to do here is check if bird Y essentially is higher than zero or I guess less than zero. So I'll say or uh, bird dot Y is less than zero. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, I'm just going to read through this program quickly because there's definitely things that I forgot and that we need to fix. Once we'll fix those, we'll start testing this and then we'll pretty much be done with this program. All right, so I'm back and there's a bunch of errors we need to fix, things that I forgot, like I mentioned. First thing, we're going to get rid of this main function call here because we don't need that. We're also going to get rid of pygame.quit and quit. I'm just going to copy this. And what I'm going to do is instead of having it here, I'm actually just going to paste it right where we have this quit event. And this way, if we click the red X button, rather than just breaking this loop, because, you know, we're going to call this function up to 50 times, uh, then we're actually just going to quit the game, which is what we want to do. All right. So now that we're at the top of this, let's start going through the errors. So the first one here is we need to change this for loop to be underscore comma G and genomes. Now, the reason we need to do this is because genomes is actually a tuple that has the uh, genome ID, so like one, as well as the genome object. Now, obviously, we just care about the genome object, so we need to loop through it like this, so underscore G in genomes, um, so that we don't get any errors. Next thing, which is coincidentally the next line down, we need to add a dot create here. I don't know why I forgot that, but essentially feed forward network dot create. Uh, that's the method to actually make it. Uh, we were, I was running into some issues when I tried to test that. And let's keep going because there's some more things we need to do. All right. So next, if the length of birds is greater than zero, if it's not greater than zero, which means that we have no birds less left, I want to quit this generation or quit running the game. So to do that, I'm just going to type break. Uh, I'll type run equals false as well as break just as like a fail safe. But anyways, um, this means essentially if there's no birds left, we're going to quit the game. That's what this else statement stands for. Uh, it just works well as well with this, you know, pipe IND thing that we have. All right. Next thing I need to change output here when we're comparing it against 0.5 to be output zero because output is actually a list, which means that, uh, you know, we're going to get all of the output neurons in a list. So the value of those output neurons, in this case, we only have one output neuron for our example. So we can just do output zero, but in some examples you'd have more than one output neuron and then you'd have to check, you know, one, two, three, all the different values. All right. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, this here, we need to actually draw all of the birds, which we weren't doing, which means instead of having bird here, we're going to pass birds. And then what we're going to do is go into our draw loop here and say, instead of just drawing bird, we're going to say four birds in, or sorry, four bird in birds. And then we're going to change this parameter to say birds. Okay. So that is, I think everything that we need to do now, I'm going to run this and I did this on purpose, but you guys are going to see what happens. And I think some of you are going to be kind of a, of a surprise. I've already ran this once, but let's, let's just run this and I'll show you what happens. Um, so here we go. We have all our birds and surprisingly, these birds seem to be doing pretty well on one generation. Um, how does that work? Why? Like we haven't done any training. This is generation zero. These are all random neural networks. Why are these guys performing so well? Well, it so happens that in with such a simple game and such a simple neural network, which this is by generating a hundred birds to start, we actually kind of come up with almost every possible neural network um, for this game. And just by chance, we've actually created two birds here that are doing phenomenally well. And it looks like at this rate, they're not actually going to die. So this isn't very efficient for most games to just randomly generate a ton and see which ones work well. But let's, let's just, you know, for this example, it worked to do a ton of birds, but let's bump this down to 50 and see if we get any significant changes in performance here. And I have a feeling we will. All right. So, um, this bird is doing okay. I think he might run into a pipe though. Um, again, still, he's not, he's not hitting anything, which is really surprising me that these guys are doing so well. Okay. So I'm going to bump this down now to 20 because I guess we got lucky and those guys just worked well, but let's see what we get now. Um, and this guy's going, maybe he'll hit a pipe though, or, and, and crap out. We'll see. Okay. So he hit a pipe. So there you go. You can see when we generate 
20 birds now we don't get quite as lucky and now we still have to, we have to actually go through the process of neuroevolution where before if we generate a ton of different birds we just we kind of get lucky and we generate one that that does very well so that's what i wanted to show and you can see that here we're actually running on generation three and you can see kind of the stats popping up here too and this guy's pretty much perfect now now i want i encourage you guys to change and mess around with the fitness functions for this project and see how much worse and better your bird gets and notice that even just very slight changes to the fitness function will change how well this bird does um, exponentially now the last few things i want to show are kind of talk about this which is actually the statistics involved with this um so what's popping up and what we're actually watching as well as how to save this guy so that we can use him immediately rather than having to always train this ai to play the game uh, but after that we're pretty much going to be done this tutorial series so let's look at some of the stats here so we can see that what we get is a population's average fitness, the standard deviation, which I hope you guys know that, otherwise I'm not going to explain it. Um, best fitness, which is the best fitness of that generation. The size, which is just, I guess, actually, I don't know what size is. I think it's like the amount of species, maybe? I don't know. Um, <laughs> average adjusted fitness, uh, mean genetic distance. I honestly don't know what that is. Population of 20 members in one species. It tells you the size, the age, so how long that species has existed as well as their adjusted fitness and their stagnation, I guess. Um, and then, you know, it tells you how long it took to run a generation. Now, let's say in theory that you wanted to run these generations extremely quickly. Well, you wouldn't actually draw the Pi game frame and you wouldn't tick at 30 seconds. What you would do is you would change that so that it runs as fast as possible. Because right now we're actually just like watching this guy run. But in theory, we can do all these calculations and just kind of simulate without actually rendering to the screen all of this stuff so that's just something important to note now obviously you know like after three generations this guy's running phenomenally well which really is honestly i'm blowing my mind that it's running this well um maybe just for the video it's doing that well i don't know uh so we'll run again and see you know if this will take longer but i guess it just figures it out pretty quickly because we have a very good fitness function for selecting the best birds and that's really important and i'll show you i guess you know if we change and we get rid of removing fitness for hitting a pipe and all of that um then let's see what let's see if this makes any difference whatsoever so if we don't remove any fitness for hitting a pipe um we'll give these guys a second to see if they if they crap out or not um why are these pipes staying so high make one go low then you can see that it doesn't do as well at least well, the first generation is always random but then after that we can see uh these guys still do surprisingly well i want to see if any of them hit the pipe so there's one that hits the pipe Anyways, you guys, you, you kind of get the point. You can mess with the fitness. You can see how it goes. Let's add one more thing to this where we actually draw the generation and the amount of alive birds. So what I'm going to do is just put another parameter in here called gen. And we'll just draw the generation as well onto the screen so that we can see that. So let's copy this text for score. And let's do text equals stat font. Instead of doing this, we're going to do gen for generation string gen and let's just change the position here so that we are drawing it at like 10 10 i guess so do 10 10 as our position for the text and then we need to obviously pass a generation so that also means that we need to keep track of a generation so every time that we run this main loop we'll increment generation which i guess is going to have to be a global variable um so to do that we'll just keep track of gen up here this is a bad way to do everything by the way guys but it's it's fine for this purposes this is just you know to see something so i'm going to say global gen then what i'm going to do is every time we run this uh i'm going to say gen plus equals one okay so gen plus equals one and then we'll pass generation where do we have this loop here in here so that we actually can draw it Okay, so let's run this now and see if we get generation. So there we go. We have generation one happening right now. Uh, let's see if these guys die. There, we're on generation two. And then you can also draw if you want to see the amount of birds that are currently alive. All right, so I guess the last thing to mention here, and I talked about it briefly at the beginning, is saving the best bird and actually using that bird. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm not actually going to do that in this tutorial series because I was just kind of thinking about it and realizing that it's going to take another like one or two videos to do that. And I really don't want to do more videos in this series, especially because we now kind of just wrapped it up. And I feel like those probably most people are probably aren't even going to watch them anyways. Uh, but I'll give you some hints if you are interested in doing that on how you can be, be able to so that you're not completely stuck if you want to. So essentially, there's a module in Python called Pickle. Um, you can import it really easily. Just do import pickle you don't need to install it or anything and what you can do is just save this object so save this winner object uh, because this is going to return to you the best genome uh, whenever this stops running so whenever you meet the fitness threshold it's going to be returned here to winner you can pickle that and save that as a file and then you can load that file in and use that neural network associated with that genome to move the bird up and down now you also need to change or create a new function like this that only runs the bird once or only runs one bird, right? Or you just pass in like only one genome and it just runs through and use that uses that neural network. Now, if you need to be able to actually break out of this while loop, because what, what's going to happen eventually is while you're training the birds, you're going to get one that's that's as good as it can get, right? Like it's never going to lose. So you need some way to eventually actually be able to get this winner um, thing here. So the way that you do that is you check the score. And once the score reaches, uh, reaches a certain threshold, you can just break out of this while loop. And then that genome will be at the fitness threshold. So it'll stop running and it'll be returned to winner. So what I do whenever I want to stop running after a while is I just say, if score is greater than 50, break. Now that's as easy as it is. And when you do this, once you reach a score of greater than 50, then you'll have a bird that's meets the fitness threshold. It'll quit. It'll be returned to winner. You can pickle it, save it. And then you can use the um, neural network associated with that bird to just draw one bird on the screen instead of like a hundred and just have it run through and play the game. And that's how you would do that. Pretty straightforward. If you follow along through all this, you should be capable of doing that. And finally, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please, 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 give a massive thumbs up. It's taken a really long time to make this tutorial series. I've re-recorded a few episodes just to make sure that everything is clear and works well. Um, and please, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, seriously consider doing that because I come up with all kinds of cool stuff like this and I wouldn't want you to miss that in the future. So anyways, I will see you guys in another tutorial series.